Well, today we're in Charleston, South Carolina, and we got friends, yeah. Danny and Karen, who are taking us around there from this area, from South Carolina. We haven't seen them in a couple of years, but so we're going out to the uh, the battleship today, which is the Yorktown. We just finished up with the uh, the Vietnam experience, which is really really cool. Let me show you a little bit of that. Now, this is the Vietnam experience, and this is supposedly what it looked like out there. Very cool. I always gravitate toward the medical stuff because I was a medic, so it's always very interesting to me. But the realistic sounds out here, they make it sound like Vietnam too. Well, this brings back some memories. This is this is my wheelhouse, man. This is this is my office when I worked. Uh, our vehicles are a little more updated than this one, but it would be just like this if I were a medic in, in combat. I would be here and I could have up to four casualties here working on them all at the same time. And you notice there's only room for me and maybe one other medic back here. And when these doors are closed, there is no light back here. And sometimes we'd even have to close this door here if we were like in night operations. So we would have almost no light. There's little blue lights like in a, like in a film developing room. That's the only light that you have. You'd have the, your night vision goggles. So you're actually, you're rolling down the road, you're bouncing around, you got four casualties, you got night vision goggles on, you're trying to treat all these guys, and uh, it can get pretty challenging, but this definitely brings back some fun and some not so fun memories. <laughs> There's another aircraft that's set up for, for flight. They can set these up uh, medically too for casualties to be transported for longer distances. So we'd be in medevac like out of theater. They would use bigger transports like this, but uh, this is not a medical transport, but they can be transformed into medical transports. This is very cool to see the inside of this. What's the shitter look like? Uh, three holer. It's, it's a three hole? Yeah, but actually looks better than some porta potties I've looked at. <laughs> okay. Go check it out. Three hole. Yeah. Not where you want to be sitting when the bullets and the bombs start flying. And it got a PX. It's a post exchange. Afies, baby. Oh, yeah. You can buy all your stuff in here. Get your smokes and your <laughs> drinks. Nice. Chew in the back of your magazines. Did they really sell Playboys? I'm sure they did. Yeah. You guys are out there with nothing, man. Might die tomorrow. <laughs> you know, you're going to look at some good stuff. Tomorrow might be your last day. Aww. I'm going to smoke a cigarette and look at some titties. <laughs> out to the ship and I think we're gonna go out to Fort Sumter today too right we're going to Fort Sumter today no no not down to Fort Sumter Me, well, oh going yeah. downtown though yeah downtown Charleston okay, okay cool I'm, I'm, I'm not in the know of what we're doing today I'm just following the crowd <laughs> you gonna sleep in here no you can sleep in here absolutely not come on they look comfy no this is just it's just canvas. Yes, yeah. it's not Brooklyn bedding. It's, it's definitely not Brooklyn is. bedding. <laughs> and I think most of these guys hot rack, which means so they're 12 hour shifts. So you got one guy in the rack, and then the other guy working, and the other guy gets off shift, they switch out. And so there's always somebody in the bed. They don't have enough bunks for everybody on board. You do get, I think you get your own locker, but you share a bunk with most people. And I don't know why they call it birthing. What do they call it birthing for? Mm. If you know that, leave a comment let me know. I don't know why they call it a birthing. I can't believe it's already been over two years since we yeah. had our RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. And our sleep has been great. Phenomenal. It's been crazy, life-changing. Sleep impacts your posture, mm -hmm. your mood, and your overall health. Yes. And when it comes to that stuff, you really don't want to rely on the plywood-like mattresses <laughs> that come in RVs when you buy your RV brand new. Yeah. So we have the Aurora Lux huh? from RV Mattress with the cooling technology that keeps our bodies at a perfect 88 degree sleeping temperature. Yes, and we also have their cooling pillows, their bamboo cotton sheets, and the weighted blanket. We love it so much that we even got a mattress from my mom. Mm -hmm. And she's loving it too, and she doesn't live in an RV. Exactly. Which goes to show you, you don't have to live in an RV to buy an RV mattress from Brooklyn Bedding. They're for everybody, and they come in regular sizes or RV sizes. An RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding also offers you a 120-night sleep trial, 
10-year warranty, and free shipping from their factory in Arizona. The best part of all of it is we can save you 25%. All you have to do is click on the link in the description of this video, go over to RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding, and type in the promo code WAGS at checkout. Here's the dental. Can you imagine getting a root canal? No. While the ships are rocking? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the machine shop right there. What I just noticed was this yellow rail. Yeah. It goes all the way through here and all the way around there. So I'm assuming that after they fix something in there that's heavy, they would attach it to that rail system and then shoot it to wherever, I don't know, wherever they needed to go. Well, we're down in the engine room now. And this is not where you want to work. You can reach temperatures of 130 degrees while you're down here on your very long shift. My dad was in the Navy for four years and he worked in the engine room on the USS Lexington and that's why he was in the Navy for only four years. <laughs> now we're in the medical section of the ship. Yeah, this fellow is not doing well. Oh, surgery. You don't want to be having surgery on the ship, man. And then I guess this is the uh, sick bay. The hospital, if you will. Bunch of sickly jokers with no ventilation, coughing on each other and stuff. <coughs> Not where you want to be. Yeah, they got mattresses down here, unlike up in the birthing where they actually slept. So, yeah, I'd be I'd be sick a lot. I think I'd be need me a mattress. Yeah. But again. Still not, still not a Brooklyn bedding mattress. No, still not. <laughs> I mean, it's a little better, but still not, still not Brooklyn bedding. Uh, there's air traffic control. Uh, if you think that is a stressful job in the civilian sector, try doing it on a battleship. Probably not fun. Planes exiting and landing on a flight deck during combat. Well, we're on the flight deck now. This place is huge out here. It's windy too, and. I don't think they had the chain link fence back in the day when this ship was on active duty, but they did have these little guys, these little nets, to keep you from falling off into the into the ocean. But if you miss one of those and fall, man, not only you got to worry about what's in the water, but you fall so far, you hit that water, it's like hitting freaking concrete, man. So you don't want to fall off one of these deals. Hey. You look just like a Navy officer. Oh, that was low. <laughs> if she had a cup of coffee, yeah, you would have it nailed. I would. That's have all you got to do: is sit there and drink coffee and yeah. look out and act like you're doing something important. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Uh, Dustin <laughs> Wagner. Cell one, sir. Alright, cell one's mine, man. This is the break, so this is where I would go. I guess this is cell one. Oh my gosh. It's just just a couple of bunks in a dark space. They stack them three high in this one. We yeah, they put a skeleton in that one, it was cool. There's the spa. Get your hair did. Oh, and then you go to the store. And get your uh, cup of noodles and your toothpaste and toothbrush and smokes. I don't see Playboys in here. Gotta tell you, I'm a little disappointed. Looking for the looking for the Playboys. No Playboys. I try to keep it clean. Down there in the Vietnam experience, though, you get your Playboys down there. Well, this fella here had a rough day. This is where the Marine. Core detachment lived and they had a little little bitty mattresses and apparently a 50 cal in the middle of them. Because <laughs> Marines are crazy. <laughs> so they just stay up all night field stripping their weapons. That's entertainment for Marines. Yeah. You know what I've noticed? Like look how thick the pain is everywhere. Yeah. I wonder, here's a trivia question for you. I wonder how much of the ship's weight is just paint. paint. That's a good question. I think most of the ship is just paint at this point. At this point. They just keep painting over paint and then painting over paint mm -hmm. and then painting over paint. And it's all lead paint. It's like a, a ship version of Cadillac Ranch down yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> they even painted the, the pipes. They painted the wiring. They painted the fixtures. 
I mean, the ventilations, look, every, all this, everything, is, everything is painted. Nothing is safe from paint on this ship. Well, we finished up on the ship, the Yorktown, and yeah. I, I may or may not have called it a battleship during the yeah. tour, but it's an aircraft carrier. Yeah. Not a battleship. You called it a battleship? I may have. I was thinking when we were riding home, I was like, did I call it a battleship? I might have called it a battleship. So <laughs> if I did, sorry. Sorry about that. And then so after we got done with the ship, we didn't go to Fort Sumter, but we did go downtown Charleston. Yes. Which is a really nice little downtown area. Mm -hmm, Parking cute. is hell. <laughs> if you have a dually, don't even do it. Just park outside, Uber mm -hmm. in. You're not going to make it in a dually yeah. in Charleston. We struggled. We barely made it with a single rear wheel. But yeah. um, thank you so much to Danny mm -hmm. and Karen for being our tour guides yes, and taking fun. us around. And especially for after the ship, they took us to Kaminsky's. Yes. Which is a dessert bar. <laughs> yeah. Holy crap. I had the Toll House pie. Yeah. Which is like, it's a chocolate chip cookie pie. pie. With like chocolate it's and caramel phenomenal. and whipped cream. And then you and had... It was a, warm too. Yeah, they you had like a up. big... I had a three layer mountain of chocolate mountain cake. Mountain of chocolate cake. Yeah. And then they had, I don't remember what they had. She had like a Boston cream. Boston cream pie. And then he had the, he had the bourbon, bourbon pecan. pecan. Yeah. Yeah. All great desserts. I mean, and those are just four of the many that they have, and they just all look and really, velvet, really velvet, good. Key lime pie, everything. Yeah. And then we went through the little market there. They had like yeah. a market row where you can go through and do yeah. shopping. And a little bit crowded for my taste, but, you know. It was a weekend. Yeah, it's Sunday. So yeah. it's just nature of the beast. And mm -hmm. I think the market only runs on the weekend anyway, so you don't have a choice. Well, yeah, for the market part. Yeah. The weekend. They took us down, um, and, and we walked the streets a little bit. Saw some of the cool houses. Yes. These houses are amazing. Is that Rainbow Row? Yeah. Rainbow Road. Yeah. Where they're beautiful homes. Just different color houses in a every row. Every other ha every house is a different color. Yeah. yeah. And then some of the, the the big old houses, the historic landmarks, the yeah. big southern porches that you see. And horse drawn carriages. I always love that. Yeah, the horse drawn that. carriages. Ah, we didn't take a ride, that. but that was really cool to see yeah. downtown. And now we're gonna share with you a secret. A secret. We're gonna share with you a secret. We couldn't share it yesterday because we were full. Yeah. <laughs> couldn't so eat another bite. We have to share it because <laughs> because of all the Kaminsky desserts and we had seafood and then we had dessert, so yeah. we had to. We, we ate had nothing to, the rest of the day. We had to wait. <laughs> all right. Here's the secret. We are gonna share with you a secret recipe. Yes. For the cookies that they made on the Yorktown. Yes. The captain concocted this. Yeah. When they make cookies. They don't they just make not, like a dozen a cookies. Dozen. No. <laughs> no, they're making 10,000 cookies per batch. Yes. So the recipe we're about to share with you, it is secret, but we bought a cookie. If you buy a cookie, they'll is give it, you the recipe. Is, I was about to say, is it a secret? Because they tell you. They give you the recipe not and we're going to share it. We're going to share it with you. The only catch is this recipe will make 10,000 cookies. <laughs> so if you're going to make like a dozen, you got to do a little math. Yeah. So what goes into these cookies? Captain Jocko's Choco. To make 10,000 cookies, you use 112 pounds of chocolate chip. Oh my god. 500 eggs and 165 pounds of flour. Oh, those chickens were busy. Yeah. All right, let's try it. I mean, to the eye, it looks phenomenal. Yeah. They say it's. Hey, hold it up here. Let's see it. It's like the, the best. Big, big, huge yeah. cookie. It's big as your head. <laughs> it's pretty darn big. So you got to open it up and we got to try it out. Let's get a good look at this cookie outside the package. Okay. It's great thickness. Sturdy, but I don't think it's like a hard cookie. To me, I think there's still going to be some chew to it, which is good. I don't like when that just breaks and crumbles. I don't know that I've ever heard you do such an in-depth <laughs> cookie review before. <laughs> <laughs> I know my cookies. You could be like a cookie critic. <laughs> I could be a cookie critic. Absolutely. All right. I don't care about any rest of that crap. I Bring me off a don't. chunk of that shit. Oh, yeah. See, it's got some chew. Give me. Give me. There you go. <laughs> mm. Mm. It's good. Mm hmm. Yeah. So you have to do some math. Mm. You know, break this down. Get some of Captain Jocko's chocolate chip cookies. But mm -hmm. we felt like 
after we heard that story uh, during the tour, I had to buy we had to go and, and buy a cookie. And, and see Very good. And they're great. Yeah. Not not overly sweet, so whatever chips they use are semi-sweet. Very good. Yeah. Not too too much. And it is. It's got chew, which is good. All right, cookie critic. I'm a fan. One out of five stars. What do you give it? I'm giving it a five. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's a damn good cookie. You need, like, a glass of milk. Yeah. Maybe warm it up a little. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a little ice cream. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Mm. Well, hey, that's it uh, from Charleston. Mm. I don't think we're going to do anything else in Charleston while we're here. But uh, we'll definitely have to come back because yeah. there's so much to do in Charleston. Absolutely. And so we'll definitely have to come back through. But Stay close. We're not staying close to it, so that's why no. we only made a day trip. Yeah, we're, we're about an hour and 20 minutes away, so we can't just yeah. pop in and out of there. But yeah. we definitely need to stay closer so mm -hmm. that we can do some more of that stuff. Yes, lots to do. And I'd probably be Ubering in <laughs> to Charleston next time. Yeah. Because, yeah, parking that was, was stressful. It was bad. Anyway, stick around for a few more seconds. We're going to honor a fallen hero. Mm -hmm. If you want to get involved with helping us help veterans while we're out on the road, everything you need to know is right down in the description of the video. Appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. I need more cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you eyeballing it down there. <laughs>